peaches, welcome back to another video. I have just returned from Ireland and actually gone straight into probably one of my favorite sim worlds, which is gorgeous Solani. Honestly, I'm thinking of doing a park like recommend, uh, no, I'm not doing a park. Thinking of doing um, a video like, ooh, Blossom just reached cooking level 10, interrupted my intro. But I was thinking of doing a video like recommending what order to get the parks in and which parks I'd also recommend getting. And honestly, I know not everyone loves this park. I really, really like this park. I really genuinely love this pack a lot basically because you get this world obviously island living i just really like salani i think it's so pretty i would get it just based on being able to live in this world in general i just really 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 like it so i'm very excited to play here with the gang we've got clem doing a little bit of keenan's video game in there Kapow. Like, honestly, you're surrounded by this, but you're in video game land, in, like, VR. I don't understand it, personally. We've got Camille actually popped around, so let's go ahead and welcome her inside the new house. I was worried she might not visit, but she's visited, which is great. And we've got the twins now living their new life in Solani. So, I have got them both on. I literally thought that just said mushroom technician. I'm like, geez, that sounds like a great job. They're now mailroom technicians because they've got to enter the business career. There's not a great deal of employment opportunities on the island, so they've gone straight into business, which I have to do as part of the challenge because we we are on generation seven pink and I have to get them into the business career. But when they become adults, they can pursue their dreams as a midlife crisis and try and then complete the best-selling author aspiration and basically quit their jobs to try and make it as a writer. So whilst I'm out on the island, I am going to keep them writing books on the side, but I'm not going to let them publish potentially any of them in order to be like, look, they're not focusing on, re on writing. It's still a hobby. They're doing it on the side, but their main career is business. But we will keep working on this aspiration as much as I can without the publishing and also we'll keep working on our well maintained garden. So as we kind of realized Coral is not happy about this at all. He's taking his frustrations out on this little box in Majiga that Clem got as part of her job. You can tell because it's got throwing stars at the bottom of it there. He's not happy. He doesn't want to be here. There's nothing redeeming about this beautiful environment for him. He just kind of hates it all. He hates the sun. He hates the fact that like he's been eating a lot of unbalanced meals because obviously they just moved in and he hasn't ever had a very healthy lifestyle because Clem is a complete sugar fiend. And also you guys made the great point that I was like, oh, I'll remember Keenan's gaming mart and you know, all my crime stuff. I forgot the kids' birth certificates. So they're gone. There's no evidence they were ever born apart from the fact that they're there alive as adults. But yeah, I feel like that's a very Clem thing to do though. So I actually feel like that's right on brand. Now they don't actually have their job until Monday. So they've got the weekend and Friday to kind of, you know, settle in, see how they feel about everything. Coral hating it all. Also his aunt, his half aunt, which she, weirdly has a crush on so I'm just gonna make sure they don't interact at all. Blossom less so like she's just enjoying it. Oh she's really enjoying it. Okay this this too much enjoyment. I get that you know the nice warm sun on your skin feels great but do you need to put that much sun into it? I don't know if you do Blossom but yeah she's really loving living here she's enjoying streaking. <laughs> she's having nice memories from cooking with somebody nearby which I'm guessing was Camille who that she's very close with. She loves the environment she loves fitness and she's enjoying all of the food that they're eating on the island. So she's having the complete opposite experience of living on the island compared to Coral. I also obviously have Clem and Keenan here as well. Clem, who is still having her job as the boss, but she also doesn't have work for a couple of days, but she can do it from here now. She does it remotely. She doesn't need to be in the heart of the crime anymore. And I also gave her this island living aspiration, this beach life tourist, which she's currently at, which means I need to get a suntan and gold and a carver party and eat a coconut. So I guess I can get her doing a little bit of sunbathing today. I feel like Blossom would be very very down for a little bit of sunbathing too. So I'm gonna get those guys to have a little sunbathe together. Keenan, I'm gonna get in a gaming tournament. Maybe you'll have a little bit more luck with your gaming tournaments here, because I don't know. The population of Solani, I feel like, is gonna be a lot smaller than San Myshuno, so there's less competition. You might actually be a little bit better. <gasps> and oh my gosh, there's turtles. Little turtles in the bay. Baby chickens, I love them. Yeah, basically everyone. Loving the island living lifestyle, except from poor Coral. Now, he needs to write five good books, and haven't written for 15 hours. Blossom is still only on the first part because I've not managed to get her writing while she's been inspired yet. So I might have to try and like wait until she drops into that insp like inspired mood and then get her writing. Coral is a little bit easy because I can just get him to keep, you know, practicing his writing. He doesn't need to be inspired. Their laptops are here. So I'm gonna actually suggest, wait, is his laptop the black one or the gray one? I feel like it's the black one. Is he currently writing something at the moment? He is, he's still writing his screenplay. Doesn't count as a book, but I'll get him to finish off his screenplay. And 
And then I think I might have him write like an angsty, angry book about living on the island, giving up your dreams to follow, you know, because you, you don't have any other opportunities. And you know, sometimes artists find their best inspiration in the strangest of places. I mean, honestly, I would easily find inspiration here. It's beautiful and it's gorgeous and it's so pretty. So I feel like it makes sense as a place to find inspiration. But yeah, he's in a tough point in his life. Maybe this is where he creates his best work, you know? Basically, I just stopped my recording for like an hour and a half to try and fix this issue. When I get Coral to go on his PC and I go write, resume writing screenplay, watch what happens to my man. He like, I don't know why he's glittering, but he's very glittery today. Um, yeah, he sits down, he bugs out, he gets the error. And I'm like, what is causing this? I basically can't make him sit at his PC and write. And I thought it was something to do with my mods. I took out all my Kawhi Stacy mods. I updated a bunch of my mods, removed all my duplicates. I even went on the MCC Discord to try and get some advice. Those guys were amazing, by the way. And they said that it's not actually a bug with any of my errors. It is, here we go, this statistic element. It's a game bug, which is like, it's a Sims bug. So I'm going to show you guys what you got to do in case any of you guys get it as well. You need to go to writing and then you've got to scrap, unfortunately. You've got to scrap the book you're currently writing because it's bugged and start a new one, which is really annoying because we were part of the way through, obviously, a, uh, a book there, but it's in game. There's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to start a new one, which kind of works as well because I've got to write books now and not screenplays. And we said he was going to try and take like a whole new direction. So maybe while we're out here, we can write something, something new. Not a screenplay, not a piece of non-fiction, but why don't we go ahead and write, oh my gosh, cut you're doing my head in, babes, love you, but you do my head in. Write something else. And I like the idea that while he's out here, like he's finding living on the island so annoying that he starts writing murder mysteries of these like island murders as a way to try and make the island feel more exciting for him. So I'll get him working on a mystery. I also just noticed that Blossom is feeling inspired. I don't know why, but that's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and get her writing while she's feeling inspired right now. I don't know if she's going to get the same book. I also realized I did not put sun cream on you guys. And we're looking a little bit glowy. Two shoes gone. We're in the island. So why don't we have two flip flops? Two flip flops gone. His island murder mystery. And yeah, Clem babes, you look as though you might be burning. So let's get a little bit of sun protection on there. So yeah, I can try and get her one hour's writing whilst inspired done now as well. And she's still writing Where Have You Been? The coffee shop princess saga continues. Even though we are no longer working in the coffee shop, we are instead, of course, mushroom technicians. And the cats are going to keep me out of me. I'm going to nip in and buy some cat stuffs because I did kind of forget about that. I'm sorry, kitty cats. I'm going to put the litter tray outside because honestly, who wants cat litter in the house? Not me. <gasps> and Blossom just reached writing level 10. I think they've both maxed out their writing now. I obviously still have to work on their well-being, which is their yoga skill. So I'm probably going to have to buy them some yoga mats. But honestly, it's a pretty nice place to do your yoga. I feel like some yoga mats here at the front next to the VR gaming console here might work. So there we go. Two yoga mats and two meditation stools as well. I honestly feel like uh, <laughs> this is going to be particularly useful for Coral because um, he's stressed on these islands. He is not a happy bun bun, is he? So maybe a bit of meditation could help get himself into a more zen headspace. I also don't really know why we've got Christmas decorations. <laughs> around our new little cute pirate ship, but we do. And oh my gosh, this is why Salad is so nice. Imagine having your laptop out. Somehow you've got a magical screen that lets you not get reflection of the sunlight. And you live here and it's so beautiful, yet somehow you still look this miserable. Carl, how are you doing this? How? With your little curly hair, little curly chest hair. Festering bitterness. What are you bitter about now? You're not bitter about Blossom, are you? No, you guys are still super siblings. It's all very clem focused, isn't it? Yeah, that festering grudge. You are so unhappy that you've been moved out here. You literally can't get over it. Maybe you guys should spend the weekend kind of like exploring the island a little bit, doing some fun island stuff, and then maybe you wouldn't resent it so much. Whereas Blossom is enjoying life. This is great. She loves a bit of writing. She is sunburned because she was sunburned burning with some burning with Clem, literally, not even sunbathing. You do look a little bit red, babes. I guess Clem wasn't like, oh, daughter, you should probably put on some suntan lotion. Instead, just let them both go out there and burn. Although not so much Clem. Clem actually got a good tan. <laughs> It was just blossom that sunburned. I feel like it'll be a while before Coral gets a tan because sunbathing means enjoying the island and he's just not at that point yet. Keenan's cooked some dinner. That looks terrible. Deep fried vegetables, but well done, Keenan. At least you tried, babes. At least you tried. And oh my gosh, no wonder he's got a grudge against Clem. He goes inside for two seconds to grab his meal. Clem literally puts her fried 
asparagus all over his laptop keys. Like, I can, I love Clem, but I can kind of understand why she's a frustrated mother, you know? I can definitely see where it's coming from. He's gonna have greasy keys now. And also, like, mother, like, daughter, Blossom clearly does not care about greasy keys. Because I see cauliflower all over her keyboard. Oh, and who pranked the toilet as well? Can you imagine having Keenan and Clem as parents? Like, it would actually drive you mad because Blossom's now about to get pranked on the toilet. They're not like the supportive, kind, caring parents that um, most kids are used to, you know? And I feel like Blossom's gonna, like, she can tell when her brother's stressed and when her brother's stressed, she's stressed. So she's like, you know what? Why don't we try the meditation mats together? I'll go next to dad and the gaming, which just never stops in this house, like literally never stops. I'll sit next to him so you can have a little bit of space. You meditate here. Let's look out into the ocean and cast our mind, body and spirit out into the ocean as well. At least 2000 miles away from our parents. What do you say? I think that sounds real nice. Which I feel like was just what he needed. Cause look, even though like he's got simmering rage, He's also, like old times, from being near his family. Him and Blossom hanging out together. She's definitely started to get a lot closer to her parents. She's enjoying the island. She's really close to Camille, so he doesn't get as much one-on-one -on -one time with her. But at least he's got a little bit now, and they are meditating away. I do need to get their wellness up to level 10. He's currently on level 2, and Blossom is on level 4, so she's a little bit better at this than him. And she is emotionally mindful. She has the emotional control, which is why she's pretty, like, I feel like Coral, good at looking after in terms of, like, you know, protection, keeps stuff away that she doesn't want her to know her about, protects like her mental health, whereas Blossom helps protect Coral's emotional health. They're very cute like that. Meanwhile, he's just there with his little being super annoying in his shorts with his lack of chest hair. You go, Keenan. We love you for it. <gasps> and she's also taken the bottom bunk in this house. So she got the top bunk for like, wait a minute, why is the clothes on? No. We've got to wash clothes here. I hate that. She got the top bunk for the whole childhood, but now that they're adults, she's like, you can have the top bunk now. <laughs> and the ghost of Vixen has come to sleep in uh, their room with them, keeping a little eye on them, which was obviously uh, Clem's pet fox. They shouldn't do much caring for, but I guess it was a wild animal, so we'll kind of allow it. And since we've left the gaming mat out in the rain, it's now broken. So good job. Good job, gang. Oh, we left the laptops out in the rain as well. Okay, this was a really expensive error. You can always ask Clem to fix them for you because uh, her handiness is level seven, but she also hates it. So good luck with that one. And all three members of the household, Blossom, Coral, and Keenan, have something that needs fixing. So she's not going to be very impressed. And the only redeeming factor about the islands for Coral, which was, um, you know, at least there was no rain, has also gone because it's raining and miserable today. And Blossom's afraid of thunderstorms. Oh, bless her. She wants to go scream incoherently into Coral's face because she's so frightened of thunderstorms. See, we would never would have known this about her unless we'd have uh, moved to the islands with thunderstorms. Oh. And yeah, this <laughs> is like, oh my gosh, calm down, calm down, calm down, please, please, please calm down. Can somebody else actually help you with your fears if you're terrified? I kind of feel like they can't. When it rains here, it's just... So annoying, but in an attempt to show that Clem can be a good parent, whilst asking if her pajamas look good, I mean, you and Keenan do spend most of your life in your PJs, so I guess they have to. <laughs> Blossom's like, nope, put some clothes on for the love of God. I am gonna get her to attempt to repair both of these. Oh my gosh, she's literally refusing. <laughs> please, please repair your kids' PCs, Clem, come on. I'm trying to make you look good here. Work with me, work with me. Please don't die of electricity though, thanks. Royal reports are in. The cursed children, 1600, uh, 600 simoleons. Coffee shop princess, 168 simoleons. And I guess on miserable days like this, there's not much to do, but keep on working on their writing. And I, um, oh, oh the weather's nice. I am remembering that tomorrow they've got their stellar accolades and both of them are like nominated for an award as well. And look how pretty where they are. There's like all these little bridges. There's even like a little um stall here. So if they ever like want to meet some locals or like just don't really want to like cook, they can head to this little stall and order food from here. There's little places to go sunbathing. I wonder if we can bully Coral into doing a bit of sunbathing. Camille checking on him. Did you stay hydrated? I know it's warm on the island, which is dead cute. And there's even little snorkeling points and everything. It's so pretty. I would love to live here. The coral is looking a bit sad. I think I think it is anyway. I can't really remember what good coral looks like. But I said while Clem was here, I was gonna get her to like try and make the island better. So I could get her to beachcomb for trash and try and like improve the look of the island a bit. 
Although I feel like if turtles are there, maybe the coral's happy. But I also feel like it's not meant to look as dead as that. Like, that's that's kind of tragic looking coral, right? And I was going to say, since the gaming mat is broken, I can uh, rope Keen on Fires into you doing the trash thing as well. But nope, he's gaming. You guys are both so close to finishing your books. So maybe once I finish their books, I will send them out and let them socialize, be, be islanders. <gasps> Coral finished his writing his entire book and it counts as a great book. Okay, that's amazing. There's no way to publish it out here, I'm afraid, but you've just written a great book, which is awesome. <gasps> Ooh, and hey, Blossom, it's me, Jacob. Do you want to go on a date? Probably before you get to finish your book, which is a bit sad, but he wants to go on a shopping date. So you know what? Yeah, okay. We'll send you on a date. Especially now she's got a whole new island look. Oh, sunburned as well, though. Okay, hopefully he won't mention the sunburn. But you actually have the option to do a first kiss. And it is supposed to be a date. So I'm I'm totally happy to let you guys have a little first kiss. If you guys remember Jacob, Coral doesn't really like him that much. But it is... Oh, this date just keeps on getting better and better. It is her boyfriend. No, actually, not a boyfriend. Romantic interest. Blossom's had a few romantic interests during her life. But I feel like Jacob probably the, the most serious one. That's why he got the CC. Although I am getting calls from... Oh... I've called to inform you that your great 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 grand second once removed cousin's friend's grandpa has passed away. I know if I say this, I get the money instantly, but I like the pressure as well. Blossom's not really a stressful person. Nothing really gets her tense, but if I click this, then if she becomes married in seven days, uh, she will get a little payout. Now, Clem also got this. Oh, is it Keenan? One of them got it, but they got married too late. Which, oh, he's talking about her writing. I like that. They got married too late. However, now Blossom has got it. And if she gets married in seven days, she will get a cash payout. But she is an unflirty sim. So whenever I try and do flirty things, it's like a futile flirt. And a pathetic pickup line. She's great when it comes to romance. And oh my gosh, a lot of people have done. Oh! <gasps> Oh my gosh, what happened here? Oh, all the land grabs just di Oh, okay. Low key though, check this out. One, two, three, four. Not you. Five, six. Not you. Although another disnoot. And another. Okay. Okay, this is weird. Seven and all the keys as well. Eight, nine, nine land grubs died here. I don't think I can get into the store because nine land grubs died here. This is so weird. Was it you? Did you just sh like shoot people down as they come into the store? That is so weird. I've never had that before. That many Sims die in one place. It's all land grubs, disnoots, and keys. I don't know who they are, and I don't know why they've all died here, but they have. So yeah, um, what was I saying? Blossom, really good at romance in her novels. Not so good at romance in real life, though. She's a little bit awkward now. She's been burned a few times. But I feel like maybe Jacob doesn't care too much. He's got little rosy cheeks. I don't know if he's got a little bit of a flirtatious element. Crudely compliment his appearance. She's been she's been hurt. She's been made to feel a little bit nervous about how romantic she is. So now she's a little bit careful with it. Oh, but look at this. How sweet. I really do feel loved. So they've had their first kiss today. And he's been super, super romantic with her. And throughout the conversation, conversation, what? Conversation, Blossom got the impression that Jacob finds her quite attractive. Making her wonder if she's got the right idea. Now, I've allowed it where if they do want to like, you know, take things a little bit more seriously or like make things official, they can do that autonomously. Like I don't have to do it for them. I kind of like to do that. But I also like doing these super romantic compliments because they're usually hilarious. Come on, stop being so sexy. Oh my gosh. And we're an unflirty sim, so we don't actually get romantic that easily. But she's also not having any like aversions to romance either. And she's quite happy to go along with the romance with him. So she does trust him. I got her to try on this outfit, you know, just because she's uh, here. Look how cute she looks. Camille, would you be interested in hanging out more? Yeah, you should come around whenever you want. It's cute, but I think I like your new beachy look better. So although we didn't buy any outfits, I feel like the date went very well. Jacob says you look like you're having a good time. And that was nice. I'll call you, maybe. Wait a minute. Are you doing Carly Rae Jepsen at me? Or are you like, mm, I'll call you, maybe. Stop, stop, like, di like blowing hot and cold. Why do all of her romantic interests do this? You've got to stop doing this. Don't say maybe. Oh, and he's heading off now. I did get the option to gossip about workplace romances with him. 
Like, what is his job? Oh, he brought us here because this is where he works. He's a sales floor clerk. He works in retail. So this is, oh, if this is where you work, please don't tell me anything like this is to do with you because that is super worrying, if so. But it was a nice day. It was a really nice day. We're still not any more official and we have now have seven days to get married for money. So we have that looming over our heads. Is she the type to rush and get married for money? Probably not. But the phone call probably also making her think about it a lot too. I mean, well, I don't like the idea that Coral would have just spent the whole day inside with his parents, who he's actually really mad at right now. So I am going to go send him off on a little solo adventure on his own. Oh, look, the remains of the land grabs. <laughs> also, we actually live opposite where we went to uh, the beach houses that we spent our childhood at, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to send him to the sandbar to go and meet the locals and honestly just get away from Clem and Keenan for a bit. Although, honestly, wearing your new little I am corporate get up. Tell me you're a tourist without telling me you're a tourist. I mean, you're not. You're technically, you live here now. But you don't... You definitely look quite different from the locals. That's all I will say. You look very... Everyone here is kind of relaxed, just vibing. And you do look like you're about to throw down in a conference call. I'm just saying. I'm gonna get him to order his favorite drink, just so I can see what it is. I also don't think the twins have... I don't think I've ever been to a bar and had a drink. So this is a nice first yeah. experience. With your little red shoes, Dorothy. And please have a cool favorite drink. What are you, What is your favorite drink? Is that IPA? Is his favorite drink IPA? I think it is. You are such a hipster. Look at you. With your little craft beers and your little glasses. On. You are so hipster. You also have rings on. I didn't even think my Sims could wear rings. So fair play to you. And here we are meeting some of the locals. We've got Stacy here. Mahina Camilliola. Am I saying that right? I'm hoping I am. Mahina. Mahina is throwing down. And we're starting to get a bit scared of the thunderstorm. So why don't we order another drink to uh, try and make sure we don't feel scared. He also just tried to drop his first like little flirt with Stacy, although she did just then immediately start waving at this guy at the other end of the bar. I mean, she's a little bit probably not age appropriate. So yeah, you didn't actually get any romance for it. And that guy's giving you a big thumbs down. And now you was looking quite sad. So I think we uh, go ahead and give them a bit of a, a bit of a swerve. Oh, this person's got tiny wings on. And look, this is how relaxed you should be. You're living on an island. You should be having a little boogie and a little bit of a dance. Why do you have a nice unflirty introduction? Keeping things non-flirty. Although, this is like the complete polar opposite to you. Oh, it's singles night! That's why everyone's kind of been a bit flirty with each other. Like, she's so relaxed, chit-chatty, having, like, just vibing. And then, <laughs> Coral is kind of, like, quite stiff, quite awkward, feeling so much rage and so out of place that he's kind of stiff. Whereas Mahina is showing signs of the lover personality type. So very, very different from him. But sometimes opposites kind of tracked. You guys are both sat at the bar together. Is there a toilet here? Because you also need a wee. Yeah, you, is this a toilet? Yeah, go for a wee. Don't want to be embarrassing yourself. Especially after two of your little craft beers. But you're having a playful conversation with Mahina. Now I have added some... Oh, Jacob's for some reason here as well. I have added some sims in the background just because you guys made the point that we were starting to get into dating cousin territory and we don't want to do that. We were running out of sims a little bit and also with being in Solani, I wanted some sims that kind of looked more like Islanders, which is where Mahina has come from. So I'm kind of glad these guys have bumped into each other and I deliberately made sims of, you know, a bunch of different kind of personalities. Mahina is probably the complete polar opposite to Coral. So it's kind of interesting that these guys have been the ones who've bumped into each other. I kind of feel like though right now, maybe somebody completely opposite to him is sort of just what he needs. So I'm going to offer to buy her a drink and introduce myself. Have a little a little chit chat with her. Your royalties are doing pretty well from your book. Why don't you get a lot of co coca lotta? It sounds yummy. Jacob, why are you? Oh, Jacob lives on Solani as well. Jacob having a chit chat with Mihina, which I don't love because I literally just bought her a drink so I could chat with her. But you're just kind of stood there awkwardly also not really knowing what to do about the situation and getting hit on by an old woman. So I'll get them to come and sit outside. So it's just it's just us two. Look how far apart it's- Oh no, he moved over! I was about to say, it's the first person you've met here. Oh my gosh, literally. Literally! She's playing in the sun because it's taking you this long to think of something to say. You can't be going to the Don't clean the toilets, okay? You, this isn't your job. Why don't you go and exchange your names instead, okay? That's a nice, you know, chill, normal thing to do when you first meet someone. You, like, you know, blossoms and flirty because of stuff that's happened to her. You were born like, with the actual definition of being super socially awkward, weren't you, Coral? Which I kind of love. Mahina. I do really love that about him. Mahina, my name is Coral. Uh, There's a lot of Coral here. It's it's kind of dead. 
Uh, that's kind of an awkward way to start the talking to somebody, but okay. Oh my gosh, you did not just jump in with that. Why would you just ask someone that? You've literally just exchanged names. Okay. Do you think... <laughs> is that how he flirts? Hi, my name's Coral. All the coral here is dead. Am I attractive? Like, who does that? The coral here is dead, but do I look dead? Coral, bless you. You are so bad at this. But it's kind of working. She's inspired. She's inspired by how awkward you are and she does think that you're attractive. So, you know, you've got that going for you. She also really wanted to build a scan sculpture, so maybe you guys could build one together to get away from all the old people that seem to want to hang out here and judge you. She wanted to make some sandcastles, so we're, we're making some sandcastles together. And I feel like he's made his first little island friend. <laughs> Even if it had the most socially awkward beginning, I feel like Mahini is a very relaxed sim and kind of finds it endearing that he's so awkward and... I don't know, I feel like she's kind of into it. If not, I don't know if she's into it romantically, but she does find him attractive, so maybe she is. But she at least finds... I think she finds him kind of cute and funny. I'm gonna get him to scope the surroundings as well, just to see if he... Because we know that she finds him attractive, but does he find her attractive? He does! He's got the pulsating heart! Okay, we've got a pulsating heart with her, so he's definitely into her. The last person that he was into, actually the last two people he was into were inappropriate, because one was obviously uh, <laughs> into his sister, the other one is his dad's half-sister. So at least this one has nothing to do with sisters, which is great. And it is 4am in the morning, so I think she's, uh, she's headed home. But they did build a little turtle together as well! which I'm kind of loving. And he's feeling good from his pleasant conversation and all the friends. It's making him feel like a people type person as well and feeling very inspired. So Coral has actually made his first friend. He struggled with friends at school because nobody wanted to be friends with the person whose mom was a criminal empire overlord. But on the island, you know, you can start afresh. All of your like old stuff that you had going about you that used to freak everybody else out have been like washed away like footprints in the sand. Yes, I did want to get that reference in there. So now I can send his little butt home with an actual genuine smile. Look at that smile. A little smile on his face. And maybe we can get a little bit more of um, a relaxed coral in the next episode. A little bit less of his tight little, little top button fastened. Now that you've met somebody that definitely seems to embrace their relaxing island life, maybe you can relax a little bit as well, Coral. It stayed out until 5am in the morning. He's feeling good about his little turtle, little turtle sculpture that he's built. This episode has been turtle themed. Got turtle signs, turtles in the ocean, and turtles that we've crafted with our hands as well. And I'm just feeling happy that Coral has made a connection outside of the house and actually has an appropriate crush for once. I think that's really, really sweet. And he's heading his little butt into bed now. And and Blossom has had her first crush, sorry, her first kiss and now she is like, should I get married for money? Should I get married in one week? Not really unflirty sin behavior, but something that's weighing on her mind. And quite a lot of romance in this episode for two non-flirty sims. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought of today's episode. Let me know what you think about Coral's new friend, Mahina Camiola. Yeah, and hopefully I'm saying that right as well. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.